can hear you. Well, hurry up then. Johnny! Oh, your breakfast is on the table, darling. Where else would it be? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Good morning, Dad. Hi. Don't forget you're gonna give me five dollars today. Five dollars? Why should I? Oh, you remember, dear. This class is raising money for the summer camp. Well, the way prices are these days, kids better start raising money for us. Dad, you promised. All right. Don't spend all that on women. Got to buy him a new pair of shoes this afternoon, too. Shoes? What does he do with his shoes? Eat them? Mm, he's outgrown. It's good ones. When I was his age, he went barefoot. Sunday school? Everywhere. That's Jimmy. I gotta get going. Is there anything you want me to do today, Dad? Yeah. Until my rich uncle dies, quit growing. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, dear. You better hurry. It's getting late. So what? What? Was it so what if I am late? Oh, nothing. I just thought you'd like to know. So let's don't go to work today. Let's go fishing. Oh, fine. Let's pick Tommy up and get in the car and just keep going. They got a road goes all the way to South America now. Some other time, thanks. You think the world would stop if we did? You think the Olympic Mutual Insurance Company would go out of business if I didn't walk through that door exactly at 9 o'clock every morning? Never can tell. You were voted the prettiest girl in the class. I was voted the boy most likely to succeed. Something should happen to people like that. Well, something did. We got married. Whatever happened to those two people who were going to build a boat and sail around the world? Well, I had a baby. I never did hear what happened to you. Oh, come on, Wanda Lust. You've got a family to support. No South America? Not today. Why are you coming home tonight, dear? Now, why do you ask me a question like that? You know the second one time I'll get home. I leave the office at exactly four minutes after five. It takes six minutes to walk to the corner where Charlie picks me up at exactly 5.15. It takes 32 minutes to drive home unless we hit a couple of stop signals. And I'm kissing you on the cheek at exactly 5.50. Old man routine getting you down again? No, oh, I don't know. Sometimes I get to feel like a wheel within a wheel within a wheel. Oh, you and 50 million others. I don't want to be like 50 million others. Oh, but you're John Forbes, average American, backbone of the country. I don't want to be an average American, backbone of the country. I want somebody else to be the backbone and hold me up. You've been reading Tommy's geography book again. Glamorous Borneo, rubber plantations and dusky dames. Well, it sounds a lot better than Glamorous Olympic Mutual Insurance Company, Inc. Speaking of which, we're here. Oh, well, see it exactly 5.50. Wait a minute. I'm getting a little bored of that kiss on the cheek, too. Mm. Thanks. You're welcome. And let's have a better mood when you come home tonight. I'll give it all I got trying. Bye, dear. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. How's every little thing? Fine, just fine. Morning, John. Come on in. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. Good morning, dear. Don't forget, you and Sue are having dinner with us tonight. Oh, is that tonight? Is it that hard to take? Let me ask you something, Ed. What did we do a week ago tonight? Hmm, had dinner, played bridge. Two weeks ago tonight. Same thing. Two years ago tonight. Three years ago tonight. You mean we're, we're in a rut? Six feet deep. Let's revolt, Ed. When the girls bring out the cards tonight, let's stand on our constitutional rights and get drunk instead. If you want to. That's the spirit. Now, don't forget. But I thought you liked to play bridge. I do, but a man has to draw the line somewhere. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. Hello, friend. Hello, Mac. What do you want? Just a kind word and a pat on the back for a job well done. Come in. Hold the calls, Maggie. What job? Smiley embezzlement case. 
I located about 4,000 bucks. <laughs> he had it well hidden. Where? Mona Stevens. 427 North Stockton. Nice work. No straight. Did you talk to her? Yeah. And I wasn't busy looking at her. I don't blame him for robbing his company. She's worth it. Maggie, bring in the Continental Finance Company file, will you? Yes, Mr. Forbes. She have the cash or what? No, nothing so crude. He bought her a lot of little pretties, fur coat, little things like that. She know they were bought with stolen money? Well, he's been in the can for four months. I think she has a vague idea. How much are you liable for? Thanks, Maggie. Come around $10,000. I bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. You'd be surprised how little time I have to think about you at all, Mike. And this Mona Stevens, she's quite a girl. We're liable for around $10,000 for what he stole. I want as much of it back as possible. Of course. If you want me to, I'll have another talk with her again today. I intended to anyway. Your part of the job is finished, Mike. The company will handle it from here. What's the matter with me handling it? You'd string it along just to see the girl again. What business is that of yours? If you want any more business from this company, just stick to your detective agency. I did all right. I found her, didn't I? Yeah, that's all you're paid to do. I'll handle it from here. You, uh... don't mind if I see her on my own time, do you? Not at all. When you see her, put in a word for me, huh? Sure, Mac. I'll set up the whole thing for you. Thanks. Anything else for me to do? I'll let you know. Get the phone calls, Maggie, and order me a company car for this afternoon. Yes, sir. Goodbye, Mac. Goodbye, friend. If you want any beer, it's in the icebox. Are you a prowler or do you have a search warrant? I was looking for Miss Mona Stevens. I'm Mona Stevens. Don't wait for an invitation, just let yourself in. I'm sorry. I'm John Forbes, Olympic Mutual Insurance Company. Make yourself at home. Sit down. Thank you. Take off your hat. It was quite a boy you sent to see me yesterday. I met some weird ones in my life, but that one nearly scared me to death. MacDonald isn't with the company. He's a private detective for me sometimes. I don't care who he is. I'm sorry he annoyed you. He shouldn't be let loose without a keeper. I suppose you're after the gifts Smiley gave me? That's right. I don't suppose you'd believe me if I told you I didn't ask him for any of those things. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Doesn't it? I'd like a list of the articles, if you don't mind. 
What will you do with them? I'll try to realize what we can. My company bonded Mr. Smiley for $10,000. We had to make it good when he stole the money. I thought he was paying for that in jail. Unfortunately, that doesn't give us back a penny. Supposing I decide to be difficult. Then we'll be difficult. You'd have a hard time proving that any of those gifts were bought with stolen money. We'd have a hard time, but we'd do it. Are you going to cooperate, Miss Stevens? I don't know. What good would it do Smiley? Well, he, uh... He only got a year. He's eligible for parole in two months. If we recovered some of the money, it might help him. Then again, it might not. Who cares? I don't want stuff anyway. Have you got a pencil? Oh, it's a uh, pen. I've got a fur coat, a car, you need the down payment. I've got a few dresses and an engagement ring. It's not a very good diamond, but believe it or not, it's the first engagement ring I've ever had. I'm no. rather fond of it. I'm sorry to have to do this. I don't think you are. Believe me, I don't enjoy this sort of thing. No, I don't suppose you do. In fact, I don't imagine you like it or dislike it. What do you mean? You're a little man with a briefcase. You go to work every morning and you do as you're told. Today they said go to such and such an address and pick up some stolen goods. So here you are. Tonight when you're sitting around with the boys having a beer, you'll say, you should have seen the babe I ran into today. Not bad. But you know me, strictly business when I'm on the job. Is that the way I impress you? That's the way. How should I be? If you were a nice guy, you'd cry a little bit with me. You'd really feel sorry for a girl whose first engagement ring was bought by a man stupid enough to embezzle and stupid enough to get caught. Will I take the ring? Sure, that's part of your job. But you'd act a little human while you were doing it. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. At this time of day? According to statistics, insurance men drink one and three quarters highballs every day. But only after the sun goes down. You know, I'd shoot myself if I thought I was turning into the sort of guy you just described. I not only have a drink, but I have a gun too. Let's take the drink first. If that doesn't work, I'll make a deal with you on the gun. What about the boat? Boat? Yes, the boat. You mean you and your playmate didn't know about it? No. Well, might as well make it complete. I'll show it to you. Samples? Yes. You photograph very well. I bet it's my business. Your Olympic Mutual, what's its name, doesn't advertise, does it? Oh, yes, but in our business, we run more to photographs of the Rock of Gibraltar or Eagles. Then I'm afraid I'm not your type. Let's go. <laughs> you can leave that. I hardly think we'll be gone overnight. Will they be all right here? They have been so far. All right. Just an actual born athlete. This morning I was talking about going to South America. I don't think I could make it to South Los Angeles. Cheer up, we're here. Somebody's been kidding me. Crime does pay. Oh, not that one, the one over there. Oh. 
What did you expect, the Queen Mary? Do you think you can make it, or do you want me to take over? Are you kidding? I'm good for another ten seconds. Well, what do you think of my baby? Not bad. You should have seen her before I painted her. You painted her? You'd be surprised what a little elbow grease will do when you're short of money. Of course, you wouldn't know about that. No, I work for an insurance company. Let's take her out. You mean you want to take a ride? Why not? Company's time, your gas. Like to take over for a while? Sure. Who wants to live forever? Fun, isn't it? Certainly is. You're really crazy about this, aren't you? I'd rather have it more than anything I've ever owned. Didn't you promise something about buying me a drink? That's right, I did. You better take her in. This is the life. Have you ever noticed? If for some reason you want to feel completely out of step with the rest of the world, the only thing to do is sit around a cocktail lounge in the afternoon. Why? Well, you, you sit around in the gloom and have a few quiet, meditative drinks, get everything figured out. Then you go out and the sun hits you. And you feel like something that's been drinking in a gopher hole. <sighs> How did you ever get mixed up with someone like Smiley? As the girl said, just lucky, I guess. Anyway, he was just too much in love with me. He wanted to do things for me, and he didn't have the money, so... he went out and got some. Did he have to? Was it that important to you? No, but he didn't know it. I liked him mostly because he was nice to me. Very few men are. That means a lot. What do you care about me? Oh, just curious, I guess. Well, that's flattering. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. I guess I'm a little out of practice. I never quote anything but statistics. I'm a little unsure of myself whenever I crawl out of my briefcase. I'm sorry I let into you like that back at the apartment. I got you a free drink, didn't I? Do you have to be someplace for dinner? No. No, I don't have to be anywhere. Well, here's to dinner.
Forbes, there were three phone calls for you while you were out to lunch. I put them on your desk. Thanks, Larry. And Gruesome's in there waiting for you. Who? Mac. Oh. Greetings, friend. You want to see me about something special, or do you just like to sit in my chair? Why the chill? Chill? No chill. I've just got a lot of work to do. Sure, sure. I get it. Just been looking over a list of things you recovered from Mona Stevens. Yeah? You must be slipping, Johnny. What about the boat? Boat? What boat? Boat Smiley bought for her. I've got a bill of sale on it from the Nolan Company. I must have missed it. You must have. She's quite a girl, isn't she? Yeah. Got another job for you, Mike. Fine. I'm always glad to go to work. Maggie, bring in the files in the hall case, will you? Yes, sir. You know, it's a funny thing. Take this Mona Stevens now. Maybe she wouldn't appeal to most guys. But for me, she's got everything. The minute I saw her, it was just like that. I don't think she feels the same about you. Not from what she said yesterday. Oh, she's a little coy, that's all. But once she gets used to me, we'll make a great team. Oh, sorry. The Hall case file, Mr. Forbes. Thank you, Maggie. Like I said, she probably doesn't appeal to you. But for me, just what I told the doctor's order. What did you find to talk to her about so long yesterday, Johnny? Look, Mac, are you interested in this job or not? Uh, sure. Sure, I'm sorry. Can't let women interfere with business, can we? Just passing by, or did you go out of your way to make this call? I went out of my way. That's nice. Sit down. How's the insurance business? And what's happened in the outside world that I should know about? Well, a couple of things. We took possession of your boat this afternoon. MacDonald found out I let you keep it. He could have caused trouble at the office. MacDonald? He was pounding on my door last night till all hours. Funny, isn't it? I meet someone who's kind, he tries to do something nice for me, and almost immediately he's in trouble. You mean I'm nice? Yes, you tried. You came over and told me personally. You could have told me over the telephone or... Just waited until I went down to the boat some Sunday and found it gone. Don't worry about it. Why is it you get attached to things that really don't make any difference? I don't know, but I know how it is. I had a car once that was repossessed. I've had ten cars since, never liked any of them well as that one. It was probably your first car. It was. This is my first boat. I wish I could do something to help. Don't try, you'll end up where Smiley is. But, but thanks for wanting to anyway. You're funny. Oh. You're not at all like the man who walked in here yesterday. Well, from the way you described the man who walked in here yesterday, I'd say anything would be an improvement. Maybe that's what I meant. decided to adopt me or something? I just wanted to make a report. I didn't get very far in the Hall case today. I was tailing someone else. You. Stay out of my business, Mac. I will, as long as it doesn't interfere with mine. I told you I liked that girl.
Johnny, I like that girl. I don't care what you like or what you don't like. Quit meddling in my life, Mac. All right, Johnny. And don't ever let me catch you prowling around my home again. You won't. <laughs> Maybe this will keep you home where you belong for a few days. Don't bother to tell me I'm fired. I quit. Quite fine. Thanks very much. Outside line, please, Monty Stevens. Hello, Hi. Olympic Mutual Insurance Company. Mr. Forbes, please. Mr. Forbes' office. Mr. Forbes, please. Mona Stevens calling. Sorry, Miss Stevens. He isn't in today. He's home ill. Oh, is it something serious? Well, thank you. Oh, oh, Terry, may I borrow your car? Sure, okay. I've got a friend who's sick. I'm going to take off an hour. Oh, all right. Terry, what do men like when they're sick? Lots of soup, plenty of babying, and some like bourbon. <laughs> there, that'll take care of you. And take it easy. How long will I be laid up? Oh, you'll be all right in a week or two. Did they get much, Johnny? I was only carrying about $20. There were two of them, or he could have handled them, couldn't you, Dad? Yeah, I suppose so. Dad was a boxer in college. Well, I think he was wise to go into the insurance business. I don't know why you won't let me call the police. We've been over that, Sue. But it worries me, Johnny. Think that those men could be waiting for you right in your own garage. They won't be back. Maybe if they come back, you and I could beat them up, huh, Dad? Why aren't you in school today? It's Saturday. Go on out and play anyway. All right. Pick this up at the drugstore. What is it? Of course, in boxing. See you later, Johnny. Is there anything else I can get you? Nothing, thanks. What really happened, Johnny? Oh, I'll be up in a few days. Nothing to worry about. All right, Johnny. You play too rough, Tommy Ford. Now, Tommy, you know your father's sick. If you children want to play, run on over to Jimmy's house. Goodbye, Sue. Don't worry about your husband. He'll live. Thanks. Goodbye, Doctor. Are you looking for someone? Thank you, yes, but I think I'm on the wrong street. Missed you, Mr. Forbes. How are you feeling? Much better, thank you, Maggie. You've quite a bit of mail, and I put all the telephone calls on one list. Would you go through the mail for me, please? Oh, sure.
about the fifth, Charlie? Be with you in a minute. How much? Johnny, I'm over here. Hello. How are you feeling? Well, much better, thanks. I was laid up for a few days. I know. Caught sort of a cold and... Yes, Mac told me about it. Oh. You don't think he'd overlook the chance to play hero in front of me, do you? I didn't come here to talk about Mac. That suits me. What shall we talk about? Well, uh... A couple of things I should have mentioned before. And didn't... You mean like your wife and the fact that you're married? Now you'd like to know how I found out about it. Simple. I heard you were sick. I bought some food to take to you. Voila. I school French. I'm sorry about it. I rather imagine you are. What can I do? About what? You, of course. What do you want to do? Look, I... Uh... I've done something I'm terribly ashamed of. I'd like to make it up to you. Well, if you think I'm going to stand in competition with a wife and child, even I've got more sense than that. What's going to happen to you? What do you care, really? Honestly, Johnny, aren't you a little relieved to get out of it this easily? This is a setup, Johnny. This is the kind of girl you've always dreamed about. I'm going to let you off without an angle. I could be nasty, but I'm not going to be. Why? I don't know, but I'm not going to be. Can I buy you a drink? No, you can't. What happens to men like you, Johnny? If I had a nice home like you did, I wouldn't take a chance with it for anything in the world. I'll do anything I can. Will you really? All right. Then go home. Stay there. All right. If that's the way you want it. If that's the way I want it. Have you got any other ideas? without it. Goodbye, Johnny. Okay. Call you later. May I have your order, sir? Yeah. Hello, Doyle. Yeah, say, you know all about everything, don't you? Just about. What did you do during the war? Anything I was told. I mean, what were you? Well, most of the time I was stationed in uh, Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado? What's the matter with that? The Japs never got to Denver as long as your father was there. Thanks, dear. Well, anytime. Jimmy's father was decorated. Well, your father got the Good Conduct Medal with four O.P. clusters. Really? When did I tell Jimmy? His father only got the Silver Star. Well, son, I don't think I'd do that if I were you. Might sound like boasting. Are we going to take a trip this year? I don't know. Why? I'm tired of this town all the time. Well, what's the matter with this town? People all over the world would like to live here. That's the trouble with your generation. You don't appreciate the things you have. You've got one of the nicest homes in the block, security. Well, you want the strangest husband I ever married. It's the trouble with the whole world today. Nobody appreciates what they have. Everybody else's pasture looks greener. What's come over you? Contentment. And that's the secret of happiness. And don't you forget it. All right, I won't. Come on, I'll take you to picture show. No necking in front of the children. Come on, picture show. I'd like to see that one over there. 
Would you kindly have her step over, please? Certainly, sir. Oh, Miss Stevens, this gentleman would like to see the dress, please. Leave me alone, Mac. You don't understand. I'm buying some things for a girl I know. She happens to be just about your size. Get out of here, Mac. Just a moment. I came here to buy some clothes for a friend of mine. I have the money. Or perhaps if we call the manager. I think you'll find my credit is good enough. If it isn't, I have enough cash on me. Sorry. I'll show you the dress. Thank you. Would you mind taking off the shawl, please? Off, I said. Would you mind turning slowly so I can see the back? Yes. Yes, I like that. I'll take the dress. Now, I'd like to see a few more. Thanks a lot, Terry. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Mona. Work hard today? Give me a cigarette. There's no use waiting for me anymore. Don't waste your time. I'm simply not interested. Maybe I feel like wasting my time. All right, let me put it another way. I don't like you. I don't want you around. Sure, but what about me? I've got some feelings. Suppose I like to hang around. It won't do you any good, Mac. Why don't you believe that? Guess I'm just stubborn. Or maybe I figure I know you better than you know yourself. All right. I've asked you nicely. You'd better leave me alone, Mac, or I'm going to call the police. I wouldn't call the police if I were you. You wouldn't want to cause Johnny and Mrs. Forbes any trouble, would you? Why don't we have dinner tonight? Same to you, Mr. Forbes. Here's a telegram for you. Sir? Yes, where can I find Miss Stevens? Miss Stevens? Just a moment, I'll get her for you. Thank you. Hello, Johnny. Well, hello, Mona. It's nice to see you. I, I hope I didn't inconvenience you asking you to come over here. Not at all. I, uh, I didn't know you were working here. I, I wouldn't have bothered you, Johnny, unless it was absolutely necessary. I know that. What is it? It's Mac. I don't know what to do about him. What's he done? He's around all the time. He comes here. He comes to my apartment. He just won't leave me alone. I've even had to ask one of the floor walkers to take me home. Why didn't you tell me before? I thought I could discourage him. I even threatened to call the police. He said if I did, he'd go to your wife. He knows I don't want to cause you any trouble, and he's holding it over my head. Oh, that's it. Well, I'm glad you told me. I'll have a talk with him. Everything else all right? Everything's fine. 
Be careful, Johnny. I will. He won't bother you anymore. for the day. Well, I'll find him. How should I know? Maybe he's gone home. Any message? Just a warning, Mac. If you're real smart, she'll take it seriously. Leave the girl alone. Stay away from her. If I ever hear that you've threatened to do anything about my family again, I'll kill you, Mac. I mean that. Why should you bother? What's this mean to you? It doesn't mean a thing to me. I just don't like to see a guy get a bad deal. Who's getting a bad deal? Look, I was the insurance investigator. I met your girl. I know all about Forbes. What are you talking about? Who's Forbes? Well, I'm telling you, Forbes was the insurance man. He's a nice looking guy. I guess your girl kind of took a fancy to him. What are you trying to tell me? Nothing at all, pal. You better calm down. I just don't like to see anyone get a raw deal. Where did you meet my girl? I told you I was the insurance investigator. How do you know so much? Anyway, so what if it's true? What am I supposed to do, bust out of here? I didn't mean to get you so upset. But didn't you? Then what are you doing here? Who's Forbes and who are you? And how do you know so much? I guess I better go. I guess you better. Leave me alone. I was just trying to give you a break, that's all. Don't do me any favors. I don't even know you. Anyway, how do I know you're not lying? You don't? So long, Pat. Terry, may I borrow your car this afternoon? Sure. We're going to the beach. It's a lovely day. No, I thought I'd go see Bill Smiley. Again? I thought that was all over, Mona. He's getting out tomorrow. We have some plans to make. Aren't you making a mistake starting that up again? Well, I've been thinking we might as well try to make some sort of life for ourselves. But I don't understand. I thought there was someone else. As a matter of fact, I... There isn't anyone else. Sorry. Well, well, well. Back to see the boyfriend? Oh, it's just that I'd rather spend the afternoon here than on a hot, stuffy beach. I thought maybe you were sort of getting interested in me. Women have done it before, you know. Women have taken poison before, but that's no recommendation for poison. <laughs> She's right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Bill. I've got it all figured out, Bill. You're getting out tomorrow. I think we ought to get out of town. What do you think about that, Bill? What do you think about leaving town? Who's Forbes? What are you talking about? And who's this guy who's been coming to see me? McDonald. Who is he? What do you mean he's been coming to see you? He's been driving me crazy. Who is he? Who is this Forbes he keeps talking about? Look, Bill, let's not get tangled up in a lot of things that don't matter. Don't matter to who? Who is this guy who keeps coming to see me? Anything he tells you, Bill, don't pay any attention to him. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? I got to sit here 24 hours every day and think about it. Who is he? He's someone who is quite interested in me. I wouldn't have anything to do with him. 
He's sore about it. That's why he's bothering you. That's great. I sit in jail. I don't know who this guy is. He's making a play for you. He comes to me with some story about somebody by the name of Ford's. I... Where's your ring? I, I gave it back, Bill. That's why you're getting out tomorrow. I gave all the things back. Thanks. Thanks a lot. I sit here sweating it out to give you some things and you take them back. Maybe that guy, whoever he is, is right. He could be wrong, too. We'll see. I want to find out about a lot of things. There's a lot of things I want to know. girl who asked you to stay away from me. I called you up an awful lot. That's all right. Is Mac bothering you again? Not me. Smiley. What do you mean? He's been getting into jail to see Smiley. I don't know how. Well, he used to be on the police force. He told Smiley all about us. Mac's been needling him until he's almost out of his mind. Yeah. I'm sorry, Johnny. You're sorry. You couldn't help it. Oh, this is going on. I thought the whole thing was finished. If you don't mind, it isn't exactly easy on me either. I sort of figured it was half your problem, too. Yeah, what do you want me to do? I don't want you to do anything. I needed someone to talk to. I thought you were the one. You want me to talk to him? It wouldn't do any good. When is he getting out? Tomorrow. I don't want him to get into any trouble, and I don't want him to ruin anything for you. He won't ruin anything for me. I'm sorry I bothered you, Johnny. I just thought you ought to know. Thanks, Ma. Maggie, see if Mr. Brawley's in. I want to talk with him. Yes, Mr. Brawley. Sounds very much like a case of temporary insanity. You take a chance of losing your family, your job. For what? I've already asked myself that question several times. What do I do now? Tell Sue? You more certainly do not. You've got something eating away at your conscience. And if you think you're going to ease it by making her life miserable, you've got another thing coming. Supposing she finds out, would it be better coming from me? You can't change anything that's happened by telling her. I uh, assume you are still interested in keeping your marriage together. You know I am and do anything. You've done too much already. John, you ought to have your head beaten in. I already have. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Do you want to go to the police? Well, I'm not interested in telling this to anybody else. Do you want to take Sue and Tommy and get out of town for a while? What good would that do? Have to face it sometime. You know, I don't know why I bothered to tell you. I don't either. You know, I don't mean that. I'll do everything I can. I know. We'll think of something. We'd better... How does it feel to be a decent, respectable married man? Johnny. Huh? You want to 
to talk about it? Talk about what? Whatever's on your mind. You've been reading the same page of that paper for an hour. Something's been troubling you for weeks. Don't you think I know? It isn't, Johnny. Either it's a marriage or it isn't. If you have any troubles, they're half mine. Maybe you wouldn't want to have them. Whether I want them or not, I have a right to them. Yeah, I guess you do it then. After all, nothing's too tough for us. We won the war together. You brought Tommy through pneumonia. What is it, Johnny? So I... I don't know how to tell you. I... What's the matter? I'm scared. Oh, scared of what? He's soaking wet. He saw something. Yeah. Probably had a nightmare. What'd you see, fella? I don't know. Something was coming after me. Oh, no, nothing was coming after you. It was, too. I saw it. Where? I don't know. Coming in the window, I guess. Oh, nothing was coming in the window? See? There's nothing out there. You just had a bad dream. Is this what you were reading before you went to sleep tonight? Yes. When I was a kid, it was too much supper. Now it's comic books. Where does he get this stuff? Grandma sent them to me. And they were for his birthday. I'll burn them tomorrow. No! While you're at it, send her a little, too. I'd love to, darling. It was your mother this time. Mm. Everything under control, Chief? I think so. Daddy, what makes a dream? Well, mine, mostly. Mine is like a very wonderful camera. You know how a camera works? Sure, it takes pictures. That's right. That's the way the mind works. Evidently, from the day we were born, the mind takes pictures and stores them away. Now and then, one of those pictures comes loose in our sleep, and that becomes a dream. So the trick is, take only good pictures and have only good dreams. I think he's asleep. He'll be all right now. You want me to fix you something? No, thanks. I'm not hungry. I'll just drink this milk. You know, sometimes I'm awfully proud of myself. Why? For giving Tommy such a wonderful father. He thinks you're the greatest guy on earth. He could be wrong. My son is never wrong. What were you going to tell me upstairs? You know, I believe I could eat something at that. Maybe some eggs. So you don't want to talk about it. It'll be all right, Sue. It isn't important. There's something in the office. Yeah? My name is Forbes. I want to see one of your prisoners, Smiley, William Smiley. What do you want to see him about? 
I'm from the Olympic Mutual Insurance Company. He was involved in one of our bonding policies. Isn't that funny? He was let out at 8 o'clock this morning, and he left with you. Only at 8 o'clock this morning, you were a dark, fat guy, and your name was McDonald. Oh. Thanks. Ain't we whimsical today? You like working for the city? Shut up. McDonald around? No. Expect him? No, he took the day off. Thanks. Close that door. Hi. Celebrating? Well, I don't blame you. We'll really do the town tonight. How about a drink for me? Sure. I didn't know what time you were getting out or I would have been there to meet you. That would have been nice. It's sort of funny, isn't it? What? Looking at each other like this without a screen between us. Maybe it was better when it was only screen. I guess if you don't want to kiss me, I can't twist your arm. Who says I don't? They give one to everyone who's getting out. A friend of yours was kind enough to lend it to me. If they caught you even carrying this, you'd be back in there for good. You seem to get along all right without me. Don't believe everything you hear. I don't believe anything. I want you to tell me. Miss McDonald, what's his angle? Why does he hop me all up on booze and then give me a gun? Though we've got a chance to build a decent life now. If you get into trouble again, we won't have anything. Why should I get in trouble? Why should I get in trouble? You don't know Mac. How do you know him? He was after me, Bill. He'll do anything. Why does he want me to kill Forbes? He's jealous of him. Is he jealous of him? Why does he have any reason to be jealous of Forbes? It's all over now, Bill. It never amounted to anything, really. In order for something to be over, it's got to start first. We all make mistakes, Bill. You made one. For you. Don't tell me you did this for me. All right, I was wrong. Didn't you ever hear forgiving anyone? You, I can forgive. That guy, no. He takes back the things I'm sweating out of jail wrap to get for you, and, and then he takes you. It wasn't that way at all, Bill. We'll see. Bill, please. Please. And then, as they came around the corner, John and Ted, the fun-loving Busbys, came upon an ancient grizzled mountain lion. With perfect coordination, the two boys dove for shelter. Why don't they use the ray guns? Well, these are the Busby boys. They don't have ray guns. They use slingshots. Dopes. Now, really, Sue, I'm getting awfully worried about the terrible trash he reads. Torturing women, men from Mars. All right, darling. But even I can't stand much more of the Busby boys tonight. I'll get it. Johnny, this is Mona. Has Smiley been there? Here? No, why? He got out today. I know that. I've been with him all day. He's very belligerent. Mac gave him a gun. He's been threatening to go over to see you. He ran out of the apartment this afternoon, but I found him. Where is he now? I don't know. We were in a little bar. He's been drinking. I went to call a cab and he ran out. I came right back to the apartment and he isn't here. All right, I'll watch out for him. I don't want him hurt, Johnny. I don't want him thrown back in jail. I'll take care of it. I'll come right over. You stay right where you are. But, Johnny, I know how to handle him. Now, look, you know you can't come over here. You stay right there, and I'll call you after I've talked to him. Who 
was it? Nobody. Chief, how'd you like to go to a picture show? I mean, get up, get dressed. Johnny, are you out of your mind? It's almost nine o'clock. You can get the last show. Sure. I don't know what's come over you. I'm not going to any show tonight. Get back in bed. Oh, Mom. Here. Johnny, what's the matter with you? Well, it, uh, there's a man coming out from the office. I wanted to talk with him alone. Well, we've got more than one room in the house. You can talk to him downstairs. All right. Say good night to me. Oh, good night, son. I'll go on upstairs. Aren't you scared with all these lights out? Son, don't ask questions. Go upstairs, will you? I'm sorry we couldn't go to the movies. I want you to know something. I'll go to the movies anytime you want me to go with you. Oh, thanks, son. Good night. Night, Dad. Smiley. Are you Forbes? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Why not now? You're drunk. How do you know? Give us both a break. Get going. Didn't want to tell you I was coming. I'm not kidding. Get moving. And stay away from here. Madam Mona, having a little trouble? Unit 12T, ambulance traffic, Hollywood and Vine. 12T, ambulance traffic, Hollywood and Vine. Nervous? 
Why don't you get out of here? Unit 11A at 390 down, Santa Monica and Las Palmas. Unit 11A at 390 down, Santa Monica and Las Palmas. Just a drunk at Las Palmas, nothing to get upset about. Unit 11A at 390 down, Santa Monica and Las Palmas. Unit 11A at 390 down, Santa Monica and Las Palmas. Why doesn't Johnny call? Maybe he can't. I'll give you my word, Mac. If anything happens to either one of them, I'll see that the police get the whole story on you. What did I do? You gave Smiley the gun. Who said so? He says so. Anyway, don't you think they can trace it to you? Not unless they're a lot smarter than they were when I was on the force. All units in the vicinity of 5424 Bradner Drive, Code 3. All units in the vicinity of 5424 Bradner Drive, Code 3. That's Johnny's address. Yeah, sure. All units in the vicinity of 5424 Bradner Drive, Code 3. What is it? Homicide. All units in the vicinity of 5424 Bradner Drive, Code 3. Don't go over there. Besides, you don't know what you're running into. Somebody's been shot. But you don't know whether it's Smiley, Johnny, or Johnny's wife. There's an easier way. Wait a minute. All units in the vicinity of... Lieutenant House, please. Hello, Fred. This is McDonald. <laughs> yeah, fine, thanks. Yeah. Say, I was just riding down Bradner Drive, 5400 block. Saw a big commotion over there. I wondered if you had anything on it. Yeah, thanks. You were going to who and tell him about me? Yeah, Fred. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see. A prowler? Anybody hurt? Uh-huh. Yeah. I see, all right. Yeah, thanks, Freddy. I just thought there might be something in it for me. Yeah, thanks. What is it, Mac? Smiley. How do you like that, Johnny? He told him Smiley was a prowler. What happened to Johnny? They will read about it in the papers tomorrow. But you better start thinking about yourself. We'll take a car trip for a few days. I know how you feel about this. Yeah. Yeah, where are your bags? Get your pack. I figured it would work out this well. I thought they'd throw a scaring to each other. Imagine Johnny killing him. I think he had more sense. You'll have to help me a little with this packing. Spotty wasn't a bad guy. Never hurt anyone, really. Of course he didn't. Didn't hurt anyone. Didn't help anyone. He wasn't anything. He was a nice guy. It wasn't enough. For who? Me. People were born to have certain things. 
Smiley didn't have the nerve, and Forbes didn't have the chance. So it's me you end up with. I think we'll spend a few days in San Francisco. Then we'll cut across to Reno. Do you like gambling, Mona? You know, I'm a great gambler, Mona. But what's more important, I'm a lucky gambler. Look at this thing tonight, for instance. It was a thousand to one shot. I'd get rid of both of them at once. Now, you'll forget about Smiley in a few days. You don't think so now, but you will. You haven't thought about it yet, but when you do, you'll realize the only reason I did all this was because I, I really love you. Tell the boys to get the stretch room, will you? Get all the information you needed? I'll be through in a minute. Now hurry it up. I'd like to be home before midnight. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in weeks. I haven't either. How about you? Okay. Button it up, will you? Well, Mr. Forbes, we're all ready to go. There'll be a few routine questions that we'll have to ask you, so keep yourself available for the coroner's inquest. Right. Thanks a lot. You've been very cooperative. Good night. We're leaving now, Miss Forbes. Better have somebody board up that window. Good night. Good night. I know how terrible you must feel about this. But the important thing is that you weren't hurt. It could have been so much worse. There's not going to be any trouble. Try to forget about it, Johnny. Please try. I'll fix you a cup of coffee. Sit down, Sue. I gotta get this off of my mind or I'll go crazy. I've been covering one lie with another till I'm nearly out of my mind. This man I killed tonight, he wasn't a prowler. I knew he was coming. That's why I wanted you and Tommy out of the house. He had good reasons for wanting to kill me, Sue. Better reasons than I had for killing him. Well, why should anyone want to kill you? Because of his girl. I met her on a case a couple of months ago. She was the one who phoned and told me he was coming. What about this girl? This man, Smiley, just got out of jail today, and somebody told him a lot of things about her and me. Were they true? Yes. I don't know what I can possibly say. I can't give you an explanation. I wanted to tell you. I, I tried. Sue, say something. Please say something. I can't go on with this on my conscience. Conscience? You make it sound like a dirty word. You're worrying about your filthy little conscience. But I've got my son to think about. I thought about that too. And ended up by covering one lie after another, and now a man is dead. I can't lie anymore. I wanted you to know before I went to the police. You're not going to the police. You lied once. Came easy enough for you then? You've got to lie now. I mean this, Johnny. If you drag this family through the dirt, I'll never forgive you.
I was just reading about it, Mr. Forbes. Yeah. I guess we had all the papers. I didn't think you'd be in today. Might as well be yours anyway. You're in awfully early, aren't you? Early to bed, early to rise. There are a couple of men from the district attorney's office waiting inside. All right. Mr. Forbes? Yeah. We're from the district attorney's office. I know. There's a couple of questions we'd like to ask you about last night, Mr. Forbes. Look, uh, I've decided to make a full statement on the case. Quite a few things I didn't tell the police last night. Maybe we'd better go down to the district attorney's office. Let's go. When he arrived the first time, I, I chased him away. He came back, broke in the window. I knew he had a gun. I had to kill him. You wouldn't have had to if you'd called the police in the first place? I've explained to you the reasons I felt I couldn't do that. Reasons? They make a lot of sense now, don't they? Well, it all checks your statement, the report of our investigator, the statement Miss Stevens gave us. Mona Stevens been here? She's here now, upstairs, under arrest. For what? That depends on McDonald. She shot him. If he dies, it's one thing. If he doesn't, it's another. Can I talk to her? Nobody can talk to her. Go on, get out of here. I'd like to hold you, all right? Personally, I think we've got the wrong person in the cell upstairs. There's nothing I can do about it. It so happens the homicide you committed was justifiable. Bill Smiley was coming to kill you. Just a little call to the police, and you could have avoided all this mess. But no, you kill a man. And that's not a pleasant thing to live with for the rest of your life. Or don't things like that bother you? Go on, get out of here. <laughs> How did you know I was here? I phoned. I'm taking Tommy out of school. I suppose that's best. How much does he know about everything? You can't expect to keep too much from a child of his age. 
I think you should ask Ed for a transfer to some other town. Are you sure you don't want a divorce, Sue? I've thought about it. There's no use kidding you. I've thought about it a lot. I'd almost made up my mind. And then I got to thinking, if a man has always been a good husband, except for 24 hours, how long should he be expected to pay for it? I don't know, Sue. I suppose some people would say forever. I'm not sure it'll ever be the same. Not for a long time, anyway. But we've weathered other things. Maybe we can handle this. That's, of course, if you want to try. Of course I do. All right. That's what we'll do, then. We'll try. Mm -hmm.